welcome back. It's Elliot Hulse with the newest segment of the Truth About Building Strength series that I put together. Before we get started, I want to thank you, let you know how much I appreciate you for letting me share this strength temple system that I've devised with you. You know, there are a lot of meatheads and pretty boys uh, out there that you could be listening to, but it takes a unique individual to be passionate enough about building true strength and fitness to be excited about the type of things that we're talking about here. So I just want to start by saying thank you to our community. Now, this, uh, what we're going to present here today is the first field that I described in previous uh, videos as it relates to the nervous system. Now just to recap briefly, we remember that the brain is like the root, the brain is like the antenna, it's like the beginning of our nervous system and it essentially melts down into our body through our peripheral nervous system. Last time we spoke about the differences between the central and the peripheral nervous system. Well, as, that, as your brain extends itself through the nervous system down into your body, it roots itself through your feet in what I'm calling field one of the nervous system. So what you'll recognize here is uh, what would be the sciatic nerve and then all of its uh, extensions, and I don't know the names of all of them, but you can definitely look in an anatomy book and see exactly what I've described here, um, all those extensions and then it's rooting in through our feet. Now some of the things that we want to talk about and that we mentioned in earlier videos is how to stimulate the anabolic side or the parasympathetic side of this, the uh, autonomic nervous system in order to really maximize our strength in each individual field or nerve ganglia throughout our body. So I hope you're following and you understand what I'm saying. So essentially there are as it relates to the other video, when you've got your catabolic, your anabolic, or you've got your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system balance, what we want to do is we want to know the best ways to stimulate both branches of the nervous system and achieve balance so that we are, so that we're really becoming the strongest versions of ourselves through the expression of higher vitality, greater strength, more athleticism, more energy, all the things that com compromise or come together to create a magnificent human being that is maximizing its potential in all areas of our life. So that's why this information is so important. It goes so far beyond just picking up a certain amount of weight or looking a particular way. All of that stuff is just an expression of what we're learning here today. So as it relates to the nervous system and balancing it through the right activities, through the right exercise, through the right lifestyle and nutrition, we're going to approach field one and we're going to start with catabolic stimulation or the building, really the breaking down to ultimately allow the building up of this region of our body and all of the, the, the mental, emotional, spiritual associations with this particular area. Because like we said earlier, our entire nervous system, our whole body is a brain body. We're not, our brain's not separate from our body as I described earlier, the brain melts down into the body, into our organs and into our muscle tissue to create a unified, holistic human being, and, and it, that's you know that's basic to recognize. So uh, the best catabolic stimulators of the roots or the field one in the nervous system would be some of the things that most of us are doing right now. Now, what we're going to talk about eventually is how to balance this out because I have a feeling that a lot of us are not maximizing our potential in this area simply because we're paying way too much attention to the to the catabolic stimulation or the, the, uh, the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system as it relates to this system that we're learning. So anyway, heavy squats, I mean that sounds familiar to most of us, heavy deadlifts, heavy lunges, jumping, sprinting, these are all breakdown activities. These are all catabolic, yang dominant activities that are essential for creating balance. But what happens is, well let's move over to this side anyway. When we stimulate the other side of the nervous system through exercises and activities that are more anabolic, that stimulate the parasympathetic end of the nervous system, we create balance that allows us to maximize our true potential. How many of us are you know, squatting and deadlifting and, and, and lunging very heavy weight, but ultimately we're tired, we're beat down, we're disoriented, we're not satisfied with our results, we're in pain. There's a lot of breaking down, but then the building up would be associated with activities like massage, in particular with the legs and the feet, 
Stretching also falls under that category of massage or myofascial release through the, uh, the use of foam rollers and things of that nature. I've done videos in the past of that. A lot of people call that stuff recovery and it just sounds so soft and passive and who the heck wants to do it? But what I'm telling you and what I'm going to show you in subsequent videos is a, is a system that of discipline essentially where we pay very close attention to this in order to build up the anabolic stimulation and, uh, and, and really maximize the power expression through each one of our fields of energy. So uh, barefoot walking is another good one. I know these barefoot shoes are becoming more and more popular. Walking on the beach, getting your feet in the dirt. Some of the exercises that we do at my gym prior or post-workout involve going outside on the grass, taking our shoes off, and performing a series of what I call anabolic activators that we'll talk about later on. Now this is very important because, as I mentioned before, metaphorically and literally, our legs are rooting us into the ground. It's our connection to the earth. How many of us don't feel connected? And, and metaphorically and literally, I mean that in many ways I'm going to talk about the weaknesses that are associated with not feeling that, that rootedness or that grounding that's associated with the equally balanced field one uh, lifestyle, exercise, nutrition protocol. Um, so anyway, standing meditation is another one. My brother is, is very into standing meditation. You can Google it. It's a, it's a form of Qigong meditation. I'd invite you to check it out if this type of stuff really interests you. And then ultimately, the anabolic energizers or the anabolic series of energizers that I'm going to share with you in another video uh, for the Field 1 region. So if what I'm describing here is out of balance, which for the most part it's going to be if you exercise or beat yourself up and, and don't participate in some of this anabolic stimulation, is you're going to experience either tightness or laxity within the joints and the legs. So you'll either have people who just, you know, they're so tight that they can't even touch the ground. They try to grab their knee and they're like, they grab their foot and they're just like kicking back. There's no mobility. There's a lot of rigidity. They're very tight. They're very clenched up in that area. And ultimately that tightness does not allow for the, for the energy to pass through field one and root itself into the ground. There's dysfunction there. And you have to understand that. Our muscles are an expression of our nervous system. The nervous system is not given the opportunity to, to flow because there's too much viscosity due to the tightness in your muscles and all the trigger points that are associated with it, then you're, you're really never going to be able to do all the things that a fully functional, vibrant, vital, healthy, strength temple person can do. And, uh, and tightness is, is one of the things that's going to cause that. Laxity is the other one. You ever know people who are so... See, you can have an overexpression or an underexpression of this of any of our particular fields. An underexpression of strength through our legs are people who just have really weak legs. They're really a lot of times this is women, you know, they have really loose joints down there, you know, they're constantly buckling or falling all over the place, twisting ankles, twisting knees. Those are people who either have imbalances such that, you know, some areas are tighter than others and the tight areas are pulling you out of uh, what's called instantaneous axis of rotation through your joints, or they're just, their joints are just freaking so lax that they're, they're falling all over the place. Another weakness of power expression through field one, uh, like I described earlier, would be knee problems, sciatica, like we watch this sciatic nerve drop through. If we end up with a overdeveloped piriformis and some of the, the deep gluteal muscles, it literally shuts off. If you imagine that's your piriformis, because that's kind of what it looks like. It shuts off the body's ability to shuttle strength through that leg. That nervous system, your nervous system is blocked. That's associated with, that's going to be associated with a ton of dysfunction throughout your entire life, but most obviously, you're in freaking pain. And when you're in pain, there's not much that you can do to fully express yourself in, in, in any regard. You know, you're, you're a miserable person, you're a miserable person to be with. Sciatica, big one. Low back pain is also associated with the same thing. Overweight and constipation are other ex expressions of having a really tight area down there. Um, it, it, when we start talking about field two, we'll start talking about the tightness associated with sexuality and, di and, and digestion. But ultimately, if we're, if, we're, if we're tight and restricted or really lax in this area, we can also experience things like weight gain. People who are having a hard time losing weight are always fat, 
simply due to the overexpression or the overstimulation of the adrenals, which we're going to talk about in a minute, you're, uh, you're, you're going to have a hard time losing weight. That catabolic hormones that flood your, your system don't allow you the time to rest and digest to ultimately express the testosterone, growth hormone, DHA, all these hormones that build you up and make you a man. Now, as we described earlier, the and as everyone knows, and this, this shit just makes perfect sense to me, it's all too logical, and that's why I find it's very confusing to me that people find this weird or, or there's something ambiguous about these ideas. When really, if you look at the human body and you recognize that the brain literally melts down into the body, as we described earlier, and you can attribute a lot of our emotions, our feelings, our desires, our cognitive abilities, our subconscious abilities to the brain. We would all agree with this, correct? Well, the brain is literally dripping down, is extending itself into our body. Wouldn't it make sense that our body also expresses our thoughts, our feelings, and, uh, and, and, and ultimately, we think through our body. We express emotions through our body. Right now, I'm, ex I'm moving my hands a lot. I move my hands a lot, I talk very loud. I'm expressing what my emotions are harboring through the movement of my body. That's why exercise is so important in many regards. But ultimately, if that is clenched up, which it typically is, especially living in uh, very socialized commu uh, communities or, or socialization uh, countries, cultures, that's essentially what I'm looking for, very socialized, where there are a lot of rules and a lot of ways of being, and there's a lot of uh, political correctness. You, you need to be this way and don't say this and shut your mouth here and act this way, listen to this person, do that. When we're, our, our emotions are shut down, they build up in our body. And, and then, they, so then essentially our body is harmed by the way we're thinking and vice versa. If your body is, is, is dysfunctional, the way you feel is going to suck too. So a person with sciatica, with a very shut down field one, is not a happy, stable person. It's very hard to be happy and stable and vibrant and vital when your freaking back hurts and your leg hurts and, and you're, you're always in, dis, uh, in, in discomfort. So uh, anyway, to further elaborate, when there is a dysfunction or a tightness in this particular area and the nervous system is not allowed to express itself, there's going to be feelings of loneliness, anxiety, and a feeling of not belonging. Essentially, not feeling rooted in who we are, in belonging, and having and deserving what a, a human being essentially is required to be fully functional and um, vibrant, vital. Uh, this is very well known by marketers and television advertisers. They're constantly attacking your safety and security, your feeling of belonging, having you feel inadequate if you don't have this particular type of car or you don't live in this particular neighborhood or you don't have the newest iPhone, anything of that nature. Whenever your, your, your manhood, who you are, is being attacked, you're going, to, you're going to end up feeling like you don't have what you need or you don't deserve it. Ultimately, you're just not good enough to have these things. This is all, these, those are all emotional expressions or physical expressions of the weakness that's associated with having imbalance in field one. If you're fully functional and you're the type of person that's really expressing everything that you are, and you're doing everything uh, that I'm describing here with creating balance in your autonomic nervous system and having really strong legs, you're going to be stable and mobile at the same time. Now, if you're an athlete, this makes perfect sense. You want to have strong, powerful, stable legs, but you want to be able to move. How many of us know guys, you know, typically strength athletes and powerlifters, who can squat a lot of weight, but they just can't freaking move? Well, that's an imbalance associated with, uh, well, it would be on this side, weakness throughout this zone, or this field of energy. Stable, strong, yet mobile. It's the type of athlete that you want to be. It's the type of person you want to be. It's the type of fitness you want to, uh, to achieve to become the strongest version of yourself. Balanced adrenal glands and good digestion, as we described earlier. You're going to have a feeling of stillness, security, and stability. If you could just think of a tree, or an oak tree that's well rooted into the ground, it's still, it's secure, it's stable. Its roots have, have grown deep into the ground. 
Now, obviously, we're not, we're not trees. But metaphorically and emotionally, they're, they're, you elicit a particular feeling of having all that you need, being grounded, and, be, and belonging where you are. How many of us don't believe, feel like we belong? We're constantly challenged with, you're not good enough. You don't have enough. You don't have everything you need. But a person who has strong power that's emanating and, and dripping through their roots, that's it, it, very low viscosity, there's a lot of energy driving itself through your nervous system, right into your legs, into the earth. Feel stable, secure, confident, and like they belong. So I hope this is helpful to you. I'm really excited to make these videos for you guys. I know this is not the type of stuff that everyone's interested in, but like I said, there are a lot of other people you can listen to, and you know, it's, it's, this is for a unique individual, a unique set of individuals, maybe 5%, and this is our community, and these are the things that we find very interesting and essential because we're committed to becoming the strongest versions of ourselves. I'll be back next week with another video where we're going to be talking about field number two and how we can maximize our strength and ability through the hips. And it's also associated with sexuality and digestion. Talk about it next time.